Hey guys, so I figured I would film a little update kind of Q&A type thing. By the way, my hair is super frizzy right now. I did just get out of the shower and I usually put it up in a uh, bun, but I only put it in a ponytail and it made it super frizzy because I didn't want to wash my hair today. But anyways, okay, so it's going to be like just a little update, a little Q&A of some things that people have asked me recently figured I would answer here. So if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm actually in my living room. Um, I have not been using the recliner like I thought I would. It's very uncomfortable. It makes me feel kind of, mm, what's the word, Debil debilitated maybe? Like, um, I prefer being in my living room because I don't want the recliner in my living room. It doesn't really go with my decor, if you will, which, brings me to another thing I am so glad before surgery we were like bam 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 and we got everything unpacked you know bought the bed bought the couch everything and um the bed was actually delivered yesterday by the way but because of my surgery I cannot get on it because it's too high that's okay um it is a six thousand dollar bed it is tepropedic it vibrates if you want that on there it does a zero gravity thing where it feels like you're like laying on clouds the head can go up, the legs can go up, like, <sighs> a little pricey, I hope it's worth it, um, Becky really wanted it, and she said it was super comfortable, because I actually didn't go in the store with her, I didn't even go with her, because I actually was doing my, um, self-quarantine when she got the bed, so that's why I wanted to kind of film a video, because it's also supposed to be really good for people my size, and whatever, so anyways, I feel like I'm rambling, I don't even know, I just feel like there's so like there's just so much. So it's now been a week and a day since my surgery and I go through spurts where I'm in pretty decent amount of pain and it's mainly because something that people have asked is what medicine are you taking? Well, when I was at the hospital, <laughs> I was drugged completely. I slept the whole time. I didn't feel any pain really. Um, it was more so just like a discomfort, uh, couldn't move because I knew something was wrong, you know, that type of thing. But I was really drugged. I had um, an epidural. I had constant IV medicine going in me. I could press a little button and I would constantly press it because I did not want to feel pain. I was taking medicine nonstop and it was crazy. But they sent me home with... Tylenol, ibuprofen, and oxycodone, I think is what it's called. And I've only been taking the Tylenol and I've only been taking the ibuprofen. I will not take the oxy. Um, I don't need it. I can withstand pain pretty well in my opinion. So if I do feel some type of pain, I just take my ibuprofen or my Tylenol on a clock. I'm supposed to take the Tylenol every six hours and I only take half of what I'm supposed to. And then I'm supposed to take ibuprofen every four. So I'm definitely taking less medicine than they said that I can take. But it's like if I was in excruciating pain, then I would know like, okay, maybe I should take a little more of something. But I just, I don't feel like I need it. You know, I'm, I'm getting up and I'm, I'm listening to my body. They said that's very important. And I agree that's very important. Don't overdo it because you could really hurt yourself. I get up go to the bathroom, shower. Um, sometimes I'll just get up to walk around my island in my kitchen or walk down the hallway and some some sort of movement. And something, another little update that actually kind of frustrates me, to be honest, is ever since after my surgery, my lymphedema is a lot bigger. I'm talking really big. Um, I don't want to say it's doubled in size because that's a little exaggeratory. Um, it's just, it's a lot bigger. And I was expecting because, okay, so I was at the hospital for four days about. Um, and when I went into the hospital, like the day before, I weighed myself because I was curious, like how much am I going to lose, like being in the hospital for three days? So the day of my surgery, I didn't eat anything at all. The next day I was on a liquid diet. So for two days straight, I literally only ate nothing, actually. I think I only had Sprite. I tried to bite a Jello on day two. Got so nauseous, couldn't do it. 
and then it was day two I mean it was day three and then day four where they allowed me to start eating again I barely could I ate about a bite per meal I forced myself just so I could leave the hospital because they said you cannot leave the hospital unless you eat solid foods so I was expecting to come home and be down like this grand amount don't know how but I only lost a pound I am so confused and then I started thinking okay my lymphedema is like so much bigger and is this like fluid is this normal which brings me to okay maybe I need to talk to my oncologist my oncologist is actually the one who did my surgery so it all just like works out so perfect um and I do have a appointment scheduled it's a follow-up it's not until next month kind of far within the month like in the middle of the month um so the follow-up is pretty far away I do have numbers if anything bad was to happen or anything to call those numbers but I'm doing pretty good um any issues I'm having if they're not you know like immediate I need immediate attention which I haven't had any I'm just jotting them down so I can talk to um my oncologist want to see her again and yeah the pain isn't so bad the the pain that I'm experiencing the most is where my left ovary would have been obviously I don't have it no more it's sometimes it's a burning or it's just like a pain a pulling um it hurts the most when I am standing showering laying flat which I've been doing a lot lately. I have slept laying flat the last few nights because like I said, I can't do the recliner. It's not comfortable. It's makes me feel like, I don't know. I just don't like it. Um, so I've been laying on the guest bedroom bed. Um, I slept on the couch last night. Actually, it was so comfortable. That was the best sleep I've gotten, honestly, since surgery. And, um, yeah, I love our couch, so <laughs> it's like so perfect. Like everything was like definitely meant to meant to be in that sort of thing. But yeah, the recliner, mm, it's in the guest bedroom. Just gonna get rid of it. I mean, we were gonna get rid of it anyways after my recovery, but it's just like, it's not suitable for me right now. It just, it doesn't work. Not comfortable. Um, Another question, what was it? Oh, people are wondering when is my mom leaving? Like why has she been staying? She's been staying because it seems like every single doctor's appointment, it was some new, not like discovery, but some new situation and thing was happening. Like my mom wanted to be there for my CT scans and she wanted to be there for um, my surgery, obviously, and to help me a bit afterwards. And she's leaving on the 31st of this month and it makes me very sad, um, but she has a life. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is when she is leaving. A lot of people are like, is she moving in with you? No, she is not. Um, she's just here to help me and to be here for me. Whether that's, you know, emotional support or whatever. And I know if my mom wouldn't have came during this time, she would have gotten a lot of hate. Saying like, oh my God, do you not care about your daughter? And the fact that she's here, a lot of people think like she's using me for money. It's like the craziest thing. I haven't given her money. <laughs> she hasn't asked me for money. She don't need my money. And it's just, it's so weird because it's like no matter what people do, there's always going to be some sort of like drama along with it. And I just, I personally don't understand it. Um, you know, life right now is so much more than just these stupid little dramas that are happening online. There's a lot happening behind the scenes with people in my life and things that have happened recently. And... It's like, it's more than just me. It's more than what I'm going through. And it's just, there's a bigger mess of things and sadness and heartache and confusion and fear that's happening right now, revolving a lot. And it's just like, we need positivity. We don't need this like negativity or this like dissection of, oh, why is Amberlynn's mom still there? Like, it's so silly. It's because... Her daughter has cancer or might not have cancer anymore which is a whole other question i'm beginning is so does the surgery take away the cancer do you still have cancer like what's going on with that so with uterine cancer if you guys don't know that it is the slowest 
growing cancer you can have. So there are people out there currently and in the past who have had uterine cancer for years without it spreading. Everyone is different, but like I said, this is a true fact. Uterine cancer spreads the slowest out of any. So has my cancer spread? I don't know. What they do is when they took out my uterus, they took out my tubes, they took out my ovaries, just all of that. I don't have any of my woman-ness anymore, which is really depressing to think about. Um, that's a whole other subject. But um, when they took all that out, they take it and they're going to look at it and do their little doctor science magic and they come back with a pathology report, which will show if it has spread. Um, you can do MRIs, CT scans, PET scans, all those help as well. I have not gotten my pathology. I can't fit in an MRI machine. I can't do a PET scan. When I did the CT, they said my lymph nodes are swollen. There's nothing they could do about that because of my weight. It would have put me very bad risk if they would have taken my lymph nodes or biopsied them or anything. So they weren't able to do that. So what's going to be happening is once I'm healed, I have to go back and get another CT scan and they're going to measure my lymph nodes again and see, okay, have they gotten bigger or are they back to normal or are they the same? Because you can have swollen lymph nodes from anything, a sinus infection. So they just, they don't know. So the pathology, when they look at all that, they're going to be like, oh, you did have cancer in your ovaries or, oh, you did have cancer in your tubes or whatever. What they saw that we know now is that the cancer was not only in my uterus lining, it went into the muscle. So they're hoping that's as far as it went. I should get the pathology call probably tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday. Today's Thursday. I haven't gotten the call yet. I probably won't. So I feel like I'll probably get it tomorrow. And if I don't, it'll be <laughs> the next week after that which sucks because it's like, I want to know. The unknown is very scary. Um, it's, if I, ugh, if it has spread, obviously radiation and chemotherapy are going to be very popular topics in my life. Um, if it has not spread and if my lymph nodes look like they have gotten smaller, then I don't think radiation and chemotherapy are going to be even a topic of discussion. I don't know though. That's, really what my um my follow-up appointments for with my oncologist who is the one who did my surgery so it all works out pretty freaking great and yeah um also involving like how uterine cancer is the slowest growing cancer it is one of the only cancers as well this is just knowledge that i have received i'm not making this up if i'm wrong i'm sorry it is one of the only cancers that you can get cured from it strictly just by surgery so a lot of people a lot of women have had uterine cancer have the surgery completely gone after surgery no cancer nothing but some people still have the cancer whether it be it traveled there traveled here traveled there you don't know that you don't know that until pathology comes back until you do other tests and stuff like that in my gut I feel like it has not spread. That's how I feel inside my gut and inside my soul. But I could be wrong. Um, I'm not psychic. <laughs> but that's just like how I feel deep down within. And I hope I'm right. But I could be wrong. And you guys will know. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm feeling pretty decent. I feel more so... I feel more mentally in pain because of things that are happening right now on top of, I just feel, I never realized how much I did until I couldn't do anything, if that makes sense. Like something as simple as I want to do the dishes. I can't do them right now. You know, it's just like little things like that. And I always thought like, oh, I didn't do much throughout the day. You know, I probably did less than the average Joe, but not being able to do anything puts into perspective how much I actually used to do, which is really weird. Um, anyways, I'm like rambling. I think that was all that I had to talk about. I just remembered my head. Um, cause I was talking about the spinal leak. Um, my head was hurting, couldn't sit up. All of that is completely gone. 
which I'm so glad for because that was really messing with me. Um, I couldn't even lift my head without having just horrid pain, ear rushing. I couldn't hear right. It was, it was crazy. And that is all gone, which makes me so freaking happy. Like, I was worried that's how I was going to feel forever. I was like, this is not okay. How is, like, this head problem worse than my actual hysterectomy pain? Like, I just don't understand. Anyways, I feel like I'm talking your guys' ear off, so I'm going to go. You guys will probably get another update from me soon, but I just wanted to let you guys know. I'm doing okay. I'm actually doing a lot better than I thought I would. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.